Alright, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, we're still on Surah Al-A'raf. So, but alhamdulillah, we had really passed a lot. We're on Ayah 85 right now. about that and we went into so many different things mentioned about Qawm Lut and the different um, the different um, misinterpretations about Prophet Qawm Lut and Prophet Lut and etc we talked a lot about that last time so we're not going to go over it again and then we go into a of speaking about the prophets and speaking about how they were similar, how the message and sending out the message uh, that it was pretty much the same, and two, how the impact, how the impact and what kind of impact it had on the believers, what kind of it, Im how did the, the disbelievers respond to the message, how did they relate to it, how did they relate to the prophet, how did they relate to the message, and how similar and different were they in the different things and we did mention that the different prophets uh that the different prophets were uh were actually speaking about when number one which is the the aqidah message to not worship but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and then they also they uh, the, the, those ayat at least in surah al-araf do actually mention the different prophets so we're talking about prophets in where they had uh, they had um, uh, reactions or um, behaviors that were against one people's lives, against two uh, the uh, people's minds and how they were dealing with that misinformation and how the delusion was causing them, which is the, the mind and three, the ird and the family, which is Prophet Lut alayhi salam and how they had all those delusions and following their pleasures and their those inclinations and not necessarily what is justice and what is just and what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, had created in this world. And then finally, we're actually right now talking about Prophet Shu'aib, who those people or Prophet Shu'aib's people actually had a different type of a delusion or a different type of an injustice that they were that they were engaged in. And it's really important to mention when we speak about an injustice that they were engaged in it's really important to mention that injustice in Islam only referred to wealth in our times uh, in during our times usually injustice is associated with wealth eco economical injustice racial injustices but in Islam no it is actually farther than those two pieces it can go into for example behavior uh, behavioral injustice in where even if the person was committing something that is private in where they're you know having a uh, having some kind of a pleasure or uh, sexual relations that is in the wrong place that is also considered an injustice in Islam. So we're we're not going to speak about that because we talked about that last time. But we're going to talk about the about Prophet Shuaib alayhi salam and the injustice that they were committing. So let's start. Wa ila Madiyana akhahum Shuaiba. So Madian is Madian a city or is it a tribe or is it or is it uh, you know um, a, a person that was famous during our times so that's a differences of opinions between scholars on whether it's a city a tribe or the name of uh, the name of a place um, so in the end regardless of whether that was the name of a city or whether that was the name of a person or whether that was a name of a tribe in the end is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says أخوهم شعيبة. أخوهم شعيبة means that it was Prophet Shu'aib alayhi salam the Prophet its name was Shu'aib. He was sent, and here the ayah says, Akhahum, their brethren. It's really important to mention that one because when you want to do, we mentioned it before, when you want to do da'wah, it's really important that those people that you're engaged in da'wah in, that they that you understand number one their their mindset you understand their language they understand your language they understand you understand the the different uh the dynamics of their uh the different dynamics in their life whether it's on social level cultural and whether it's an economical all those different things when you when that daria that person that is helping them find islam let's say it that way is 
coming from their uh, from their circumstances or understands their circumstances, it will be easier for one, the da'ya, to do their mission. And um, that's number one. Uh, number two is that it will also be for the receivers. It will also be easier for the receivers to understand. And so it will be easier for the da'ya to spot the different weaknesses that are there and how to uh, how to find alternatives and how to get them stronger on their deen and that's why you know even though it's not authentic but um fil jahiliya khiyarukum fil islam the best of you during their jahiliya during jahiliya is the best of you during islam again it's not authentic um but you know it has a lot it has a lot of uh, let me say reality and truth within it. What does it mean? The best uh, or the let me say the those that were during Jahiliya were the strongest in their Jahiliya. When they become Muslim, they're going to be the strongest to lead to Haqq. And that's why when you look at a lot of the Darius, I mean, I go to prisons and that were uh, those were uh, that were let's say the previous criminals and those that were felons and those that have had had um those experiences in living in those types of delusions are actually stronger in their da'wah in the way they deliver it to those that are living that lifestyle than somebody that is a scholar and, and this is really important to mention because you know not everybody not so we don't we usually assume that a scholar is a better da'ya than or a better in delivering islam and approaching people's hearts than um than somebody that is let's say uh that had repented from previous sins but that's not always necessarily right there's a difference between giving a fatwa and between doing a mawrida what's the difference the mawrida is that you're trying to reach the per to the person's heart and with the mawrida um many times you would have to know the weaknesses in how to get that person from those inclination pleasureful you know uh, delusions that they're living in you would have to know what it is you would have to know how it feels you would have to know the different uh the different paths that lead to those delusions and you won't really know it if you had always lived your throughout your life in i would say stable life um between the books studying or between you know in a in a home that has always lived in salah always lived in piety you don't really uh, know exactly what type of delusions or weaknesses the the other people go through and that's why the people that have a history and an experience in living wronghood at many times they could be the best darius could be the best darius to help those that are living um, in those types of delusions or those types of deviations actually find the right path and that's why it's really important to keep that in mind so letting the darius probably people that haven't had had um, an experience with drugs or probably in in gambling or probably drinking or stealing or whatever it is um, to actually also when they repent to be those that are helping and giving the support for those that have um, or struggling with those experiences is really important. But it doesn't mean that Prophet Tribe was struggling with that. That's not what I'm saying. But it's it's just to help us understand uh, help us understand how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was even sending um, a prophet from one a person that knew their language, knew their life uh, their the structure, their life structures and what they were going through and all that in here um Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Prophet Shu'aib and he says Akhahum. So he in other words he was part of this if we want to say it's a tribe or a city um he was actually part of them he was part of that community qala ya qaumi qala ya qaumi he said oh my qaum so oh qaumi so does that mean this is supporting the opinion that madian is a qaum that madian are basically a nation that was called madian um or is it a race or is it a tribe so in the end is that he said
because they're very similar. You have no um, no um, deity to worship but Allah Almighty. So the word ilah is a deity. قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ بَيِّنَةٌ مَّنْ رَبِّكُمْ So verily, the word قَدْ جَاءَتْكُمْ So when you have the word قَدْ and if after it is a verb that is a past tense verb, that would mean it means verily and not and not Can clarification or slash message. So, what we know about Prophet Shuaib is that he did deliver a message, but we don't know of any miracle, at least from the Quran and Sunnah. Um, we don't know of any miracle that Prophet Shuaib um, had um, had shown or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had supported him with a particular miracle. So, Your Prophet Shuaib is saying you had received a bayina. Now, the word bayina comes from the root bayin, which actually means a clarification or cleared or something clear. So, Prophet Shuaib is telling them that they got a clear message, that the message was clear and the evidence to support that message, that it is an authentic message from the Divine Almighty, from the Lord Almighty, was clear to them, that it was clear that it was that it was a divine message. It wasn't a message that was um, that was claimed to be from the Lord Almighty, but it was a divine message from the Lord Almighty that was clear that it was not a delusion. It was not a made up or a fabricated, fabricated um, message or Prophet Shaib alayhi salam being an imposter. So it was clear to them. And the, then the ayah would actually, let's go for a semicolon. والميزان. In other words, so that would refer to two things. The bayina is referring that it was that it was bringing in one that they should not worship but Allah Almighty. That they should actually um, practice justice but this is on an economical level so it's emphasizing that economical level on that economical type of distribution in that justice so that letter fa right there fa'awfu is meaning therefore um you must fa'awfu al-kayl fa'awfu al-kayl the word al-kayl is really the scale referring to um to distribution referring to this is al-kayl in where when you go and sell items there's a certain scale you don't want to cheat in that because cheating in the scale would actually bring about cheating in people's rights and how much they were given how much was taken from them and that would mean inequality so fa'awfu al-kayl in where the aya is emphasizing two things here that they were having um, a, de uh, a deviation in their aqidah in a deviation in the practice that they were practicing in on the economical level in that distribution would mean then give il in other words when you balance the your your um, when you balance and you weigh your items make sure that il and il mizan that they are a fair distribution that you're getting what you deserve and you're giving others what they deserve the, the word al-kayl and al-mizan two different things al-mizan is focused on the how much something weighs al-kayl is how much the volume of what something has so the volume some there are some it is based on volume or whether it's based on weight that you would actually make a fair distribution is a form is a form of lowering lowering or it's a form of cheating in where you are actually you're actually lowering the 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 actual the actual value of something so what 
these people were doing is that in order to get more of a particular item, they would lower the the value of something. So let's say they wanted to buy something from somebody that is not very not very rich, they will just say, well, such item is not worth that much money. So what do they do? They express a value that is lower than the actual cost on the actual value of such an item in by taking advantage of that person's probably social status or probably their situation or probably even the the the, the different predicaments that they're in. So um, and do not um, meaning do not um, do not give a wrong estimate or a wrong value for people's goods and do not cause a destruction on earth after uh, after it has become in a state of righteousness or it was actually in a good situation and this is really important to mention because when we're talking about this is actually telling us that whether the person is actually engaging in an in a deviation in their one in their understanding of their own creation in their understanding of God Almighty in their understanding of the purpose of life or whether they're engaging in a type of a, a an unjust distribution on an economical level that as well is actually considered fasad a destruction so whether we're talking about whether we're talking about a social, and which is what we were doing with Prophet Lut alayhi salam, whether that meant a social, uh, a social um, destruction or a social um, injustice, or whether that meant an, uh, their vision, philosophical, if you would want to say their understanding of God, etc., or whether that meant um, the, the part about understanding and the educational side of it, in on all the on all those different. to first know what Islam considers as what is human, what is right. And this is where we go into that DNA. I am remember that the D the stands for the Dean, the Nefs. And that's exactly what we would look at. So when we look at the rejected person, we're looking at a rejected what rejected behavior are we looking at? So the rejected behavior would be that facet. What is the facet? So the facet would include where whether the person has a deviated a, a devi deviated but a deviant image about the understanding of God or whether two but of course, that doesn't mean that Christians and Jews are necessarily rejected, at least to be outside of the physical physical country. But the faith itself is actually regarded as kufr. So whether it's Christianity or Judaism, they're absolutely considered as uh, a form of deviation in Islam. That is a form of kufr. And two, which is um, in where the person has their understanding of their understanding of justice and injustice in other words you could consider it as the epistemology and that resource that people go to to to, to define right and wrong in and that once that is distorted that's when that's going to lead to more and more um delusion and more and more 
um, uh, deviation within the society. And number three, which is العرض and family, that's on the social part, which when we're talking about عرض, we're talking about chastity, and we're talking about family, how, the structure of family. So when the person or that community goes against the structure that in this world, whether that structure meant the structure of making family reproduction, reproduction or whether that structure, that structure um, or going against that structure of the way that God Almighty created in um, in this world in where it's man, a wife and a husband, female and male in order to make that reproduction um, or whether, you know, wife whether it's a wife, a husband, or whether it's a um, outside of that, outside of the marriage, marriage bond, that would also be considered a form of destruction. So it's not just a form of destruction outside of male, female, um, but it's also a form of destruction in Islam if it goes outside of husband and wife, and it would be out. had considered as justice and that is to bring about that family structure within the society and of course finally the the part about the economical distribution and what makes a fair distribution whether we're talking about how goods are brought in in other words what makes an income and what makes what makes an income and how things are distributed so in other words when we talk about how we make income are we making income out of money? In other words, things like interest. That would be considered in Islam as a form of injustice. Um, probably even using a form of gharar, which is when you leave certain items or certain um, defaults in certain items as vague. And then the both both sides in the contract are... Um, or at least one side is not aware of a certain default within such a good or such a merchandise or etc. This is also considered in Islam as a form of destruction and bring about destruction. Same thing when we're looking about so many different types of transactions in Islam. There are so many different details when it comes to transactions and how... Um, how and what defines destruction is really important to mention that it actually goes back to Quran and Sunnah in order to bring about um, outside of the fasad, which is salah. So it's either fasad or salah. Salah would be based on Quran and Sunnah in the different matters that we had mentioned. Um, il fasad would be so if the person is called is, is engaging in fasad or that community is engaging in fasad in a form of destruction, that would actually mean that that uh, society is engaging in one of the which are the things that we had mentioned earlier in where they're distancing themselves away from the understanding of God, the understanding of right and wrong and that, that main epistemological um, area. And three, that uh, the society or family, family slash chastity. And of course, the last part, which is the economical, economical and fair distribution. All right. Um, when we look at so does that mean Prophet Shu'aib came after their, after having justice was spread already and then they brought in new forms of economical, unfair economical distribution and that brought in that facade. So this is one interpretation is that before Prophet Shu'aib there was there was um, salah, there was piety, people were just, people were following truth. And then again, the cycle goes again, just like the cycle with other prophets in where they go against Allah Almighty by committing It didn't mention idolatry, but they were worshiping other than Allah Almighty. And of course, they were committing an in, um, an injustice on the economical or in their transactions. All right. ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ ذَلِكُمْ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ would actually focus that that is better. خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ So what is ذَلِكُمْ? ذَلِكُمْ would mean that to engage in piety, in other words, and leaving said
that's why the more poverty, more poverty actually brings in more and it actually goes with all those different injustices that come with it. More poverty, um, it, it does actually bring in levels and uh, higher levels and higher rates of divorce, higher the list goes on and on. It really, you know, of course, you know, when we're talking about um, Hegel and different, you know, those different um, economists, if we would want to say, and where they, they looked at economy as that main, uh, that main, um, that main center that we would look through in order to in order to see the impact it has on the society, etc., in Islam, is that that is one piece of it, but that's not the center. That's not the center. The center is not economy, but it is one of those centers. It is one of the... That is one of those centers to help uh, to help the society actually have that have stability within it. So again, it's not considering that economy is the center, but it's considering, it's not considering um, economy as the center. It is actually considering that the main center is Allah Almighty. The main center is Allah Almighty. Uh, the main center is Allah Almighty. And then economy is actually part of those pieces to bring about that stability within the society. Well, in kuntum mu'minin, in kuntum mu'minin, of course, if they, um, if they had believed in Allah Almighty, if they had um, actually considered the Prophet's message, that will actually bring about that would actually bring about all those different, um, all those different, um, uh, all those different. Sorry. Um, all those different um, things in in the society to actually be fair. Um, sorry about that. Hold on. All right. ولا تقعدوا بكل صراط توعدون وتصدون عن سبيل الله من آمن به وتبغونها عوجا ولا تقعدوا بكل ولا تقعدوا. So what was happening here? وَلَا تَقْعُدُوا Now Prophet Shu'ayb is speaking and saying and وَلَا تَقْعُدُوا Don't sit بِكُلِّ صِرَاطٍ تُوْعِدُونَ In every single path تُوْعِدُونَ In where you're promising you're promising and you're promising and of course you're um, repelling the people that are following Prophet Shu'ayb repelling them away. Now there are three different interpretations here is that were they necessarily sitting were they necessarily sitting in the path of prophet lut alayhi salam's home in other words they would be sitting there and everybody that wants to approach prophet lut's home that they would actually bring them back or at least they would threaten them that if they were to believe in prophet lut alayhi salam that they were going to be facing one two three um different uh, one, two, three different um, uh, consequences for following Prophet Lut. Is that what they were doing? That is one interpretation. Second interpretation is that بِكُلِّ صُرَاطٍ تُوْعِدُونَ that they were they were actually um, any type any type of any type of um, any type of economical fair distribution that they were going against it. So such as one, maybe high taxation or maybe trying to engage in in taking people's goods in a in without consent, of course, and taking people's goods in ways that is ca causing uh, the weak to not be able to fight for their fight for their justice. That's the second. Um, people's goods they were they were engaged in in um, taking 
people's rights and economical rights away by forcing people to give up on their on their property to give up on their property so this is what at all do because it's right into I do know what I saw do now what I saw do now and said Billy him and I'm gonna be he so what I saw do now and said Billy this actually supports what I saw do now means that they would that's all doing they would repel away and more repel away with great force that's all do now and said Billy let they would repel away with great force anything that leads to the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala man amana bihi so anyone that would believe in the Lord Almighty anyone that would um um any the one that would believe in the Lord Almighty uh or even believe in prophet tribe alayhi salam what they would do is that they would use any and all types of different force in order to repel away from the right path what abghunaha iwaja what abghunaha iwaja and what they were seeking is nothing but that the path would be based on what they want and based on what they think is right and what they think should still take place because they don't want to change wadhkuru id kuntum qalilan fakathharakum wadhkuru id kuntum qalilan fakathharakum in here um wadhkuru in remember so when we say wadhkuru remember id kuntum qalilan fakathharakum when you were wadhkuru id kuntum when you were qalilan when you were few فكثركم. now scholars had different opinions on whether this was referring to their wealth that it was small in a, in amount and then grew stronger that is their economy that was that they were stro- small in number they were a small society in number big society they're a huge uh, city now and they that was of course bringing in and of course when you see equal growing stronger it doesn't necessarily mean always that fair distribution is done and this is really important to mention so not the west and right now the world uh the, on a world uh scale you could say is is there necessarily fair distribution well if you would see fair distribution you wouldn't have seen poverty rates and more and more people that are one unemployed more and more people are becoming homeless more and more people are not finding food and at least then the simple means of living if fair distribution was taking place then these people would not be Uh, th- these people would not be marginalized from that fair distribution all right um at the same time um it's really important to mention like we said here when we're looking at when we're looking at um economy not because we're seeing we're seeing high numbers of um you know high numbers in money and how certain people are rich and that that a lot of times the the way that wealth is presented and how money is presented you could consider one country as a rich country but the reality is you go to that country and you discover that with all the destruction in it um that there are so many people that are homeless or so many people can't find food or so many people etc look take a look at india even though the country in its resources it is actually rich same thing with different arab countries and the gulf countries and many different countries the resources are there in sp- and look at in, um africa in general the resources are very rich it's a very rich continent but all the substances all the goods um and the natural resources are actually exported um uh, and they're taken out of that country all right taken out of that country and then they start importing other goods with high prices so they become not being able to afford them even though it is really their own country their own land their natural resources are the ones that are producing such items but they end up not being able to afford it because other countries are taking advantage and of course abusing 
abusing um, those those countries. So in the end, قَلِيلًا فَكَثَّرَكُمْ That country can be rich in its natural resources, but in reality, it can be a poor country because of the maldistribution, because of the unfair distribution. And that's what we find even in African um, countries. Well, actually, even in the U.S., you could see with all um, with all the wealth there, you will see people that are extremely expensive and people that can't even afford to buy a meal and especially with COVID era we could see more and more people going through such kind of poverty and see and this is really important to mention when in where it is always the ayat are always turning you to look into the pattern to the pattern of how people had reacted and how people Com- and what they committed and how people acted in their in their in their lifestyle whether it is on a social economical levels and how the result was what was the impact on the on the people what was the impact on their on their social relations on the crime rate what was the impact it had on um on their on that society and justice and etc what was the impact it has it had and here fandur kayfa kana aqibatu almufsidin and of course this is not re- referring to reviewing numbers and statistics but this is actually talking about aqibatu almufsidin in other words the result um the result it, um, the result it had on those villages, on those countries, on those um, areas that went against the Lord Almighty's fair distribution or went against the Lord Almighty's definition of justice and how the impact and what kind of an impact it had on them. وَإِن كَانَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْكُمْ آمَنُوا بِالَّذِي أُرْسِلَتْ بِهِ وَطَائِفَةٌ لَمْ يُؤْمِنُوا فَاصْبِرُوا حَتَّى يَحْكُمَ اللَّهُ بَيْنَنَا so in Kana, Ta'ifatum Minkum Amanu. So what happened was is that a group of people from Prophet Shuaib's um a, a small group of people from Prophet Shuaib's um village only believed, right? And a larger group did not actually believe. Fasbiru Hatta Yahkum Allahu Bainana Wahua Kharul Hakimin. So in the end is that they were the 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 prosecuted group, which is the weaker group, which is the the smaller minority that that had believed, they were trying to hang in there. So فَصْبِرُوا حَتَّى يَحْكُمَ اللَّهُ بَيْنَنَا They were just waiting. It's like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they were, their faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was very strong that they said, we're going to hang in there. In Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we're going to be patient and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be the one to rule between us. وَهَوَ خَيْرُ الْحَاكِمِينَ So the, the people that were being prosecuted Prosecuted, they still are. They, they still maintained their their iman. They were holding on to their iman, and they can they connected to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in where they knew that fair that fair judgment was going to take place on those um, on those that had. Um, uh, that had committed major crimes against against the the believers because of the faith that they had and because of all the different requests that they were asking for, which is that fair distribution and that um, balance in in that economy. But of course, قال الملأ الذين استكبروا من قومه. I want you to look at that one. قال الملأ الذين استكبروا من قومه. So the the major chieftains, of course, they were not liking what was being what was being said and what Prophet Shuaib was telling them to do and what they were uh, what they were saying قَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ اسْتَكْبَرُوا مِنْ قَوْمِهِ Those that were stakbaru. The word stakbaru is telling us that they had arrogance, that they had pride, that they were very determined, very in, uh, that they were insisting to stay in that unfair distribution uh, from uh, within that uh, within that tribe. They said, their response, لَنُخْرِجَنَّكَ يَا شُعَيْبُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَكَ مِنْ قَرْيَتِنَا أَوْ لَتَعُودُنَّ فِي مِلَّتِنَا so here we go. So now they're bringing in another form of a threat. After threatening them, threatening them with different forms of different forms of prosecution to the point that they said f- that we're just going to wait Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to judge. And to, in other words, it's really waiting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would give us our rights, would give us and be the one to um to 
uh, to take revenge for us. So here they said, We're going to expel you out of the country, O Shu'aib. And those that had believed with you. So now they're using that tactic, the same exact tactic that um, Prophet Lut salam's people had used. And they said, min qaryatikum. Same type of tactic. They said, ya Shu'aib. So they said, we're going to expel you out of the country. We're going to take you out in the, that, that form of tactic. In the beginning, of course, it was a form of a threat form of a threat in order to tell them, well, you're going to be left to the different dangers out there to swallow you. And that way you will understand that it was a privilege for you to live amongst us. So they were not only threatening Prophet Shu'aib, but they were also threatening those that believed with Prophet Shu'aib, uh, or not with, but uh, those that believed um, with Prophet Shu'aib and in Prophet Shu'aib uh, out of the out of the, the that village. Or, in other words, you either follow our faith or follow the word Milla. And I want you to look at this one because when we look at the word Milla, all right. When we look at the word Milla, Milla doesn't does it only refer to your understanding of God, but it could also refer to your understanding of justice as well. How do you define justice? All right. So what's the evidence on that? Well, the evidence is when you look at the word mille here, let's go back to this, uh, the ayat that we're, that we're speaking about Prophet Lut alayhi salam and what he was calling for. So what he was calling for was, When we look at, and this is really important, you guys pay attention to this one. When we look at the different isms that are rising during our time, whether that meant Marxism, communism, feminism, all those different isms out there, they will actually be considered a mille. They would be considered a mille. In other words, it's a different religion. It's a different religion. It's a form of belief. It's a. It's not just a philosophy in where we, how we understand, how we understand social structure or how we understand economical distribution and etc. It is considered a mille. So whether we talked about communism, capitalism, whether we're talking about socialism, whether in, in economy or whether we're talking about the social structure, whether we're talking about um, homosexuality or whether we're talking about um, uh, feminism or etc all those different things or misogyny all those different things are actually considered a mille on their own in other words it is a form of jahiliya it's a form of jahiliya if it's distance and if it is not like what islam calls for it would be considered following a different religion a different a different deen so it's not just a philosophy whether you want to say you know whether you want to call it um uh, you know uh, liberalism or whatever it is in the end whether it's reactionary liberalism uh, radicalism whatever it is all those different different things in the end it's considered a mille it's considered a deen it's considered in the word mille is considered um uh, it's considered a way of life so whether that includes your definition about life your definition uh, and your how you define life and how you define your um, the purpose of life or how you define the structure of society or how you define the structure um, within the society whether it's on a social level economical level um, or different different forms so in the end it's considered a milla and therefore a form of jahiliya if it is not like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called for qala awalaw kunna karihin. so what was the response they were basically telling them if you go back and believe lata'udunna fi milatina if you go back and believe in our faith then we would let you free and you would be safe that is because they had threatened him 
to um, threaten him to be expelled out of the country. But here's a question. So when it says, So does that mean the word ta'udun? Okay. Does that mean that Prophet Shu'aib at one point was not believing in Islam because they said the word ta'ud, ta'ud means to go back. All right. Does the word ta'ud only mean to go back or can that also mean to start? So the word ta'ud can mean both. The word ta'ud can mean to go back to something and can also mean to start in something. All right? So when we say ta'ud can mean to go back. So does that mean Prophet Shu'aib was previously following their religion or their philosophy and was actually part of it? Or... So that's one one thing is that it and you can go back to the lecture when I talked about is it possible that prophets can disbelief and then later convert is that possible so we did talk about that in another lecture but really fast I would like to make it easy it's not that prophet Shu'aib alayhi salam was following their faith or their um, injustice or practicing their their structure and all those different things it appeared to them that he was on in their way on their lifestyle and their where they was practicing their same kind of lifestyle so female latina um the the other interpretation lata'udun was to mean al ibtida in other words that they were saying um that awlata'udunna fi millatina od you would start to believe in our faith so here awlata'udunna fi millatina means to become in our faith to become to become in other words to be part of those that adhere to our faith qala awalaw kunna karihin his response awalaw kunna karihin um meaning that you know we would we would only be compulsed we would only be forced to do so we won't really be believers in that and this is really important because for um for a believer for a believer in the end you people may force happen and which is why uh, which is why the prophet ﷺ actually said in the hadith in Allah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had tajawaza li'an ummati the word tajawaza means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dismissed um, uh, holding our nation the Muslim nation accountable on three matters al-khata' things that somebody might have done by mistake in other words their intention was not there um, they, they didn't intend to do that type of harm one nisyan in forgetfulness and what they were um, composed or forced to do what is force force is when you are threatened in your life or whether somebody threatens to harm your body or probably harm someone You can do two things. You could either do al-rukhsa or you could do al-azima. All right. So what is al-rukhsa and al-azima here? All right. Al-rukhsa is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala permitted when you are in such type of danger and you're fearing for your life or fearing for your health or fearing for your property that you could actually that you could actually do what you are requested to do in order to spare your life, health, etc. property. The other part that you could do is al-azima and say, no, I'm not going to and I'm going to stick and insist that I'm going to protect myself or I'm going to not, I don't know, um, you know, not give, not do what that person is asking me to do and I'm going to stay strong. Now that's called the azima of an honorable bravery, an honorable bravery that a person might actually be doing. So let's say, let's use another form in where the person is threatening you. If you don't bow down to that that statue and, and or even drink blood or whatever it is, okay, that you will be 
uh, you will be um, killed. The person will shoot you. In that situation, you also have a ruhsa and al azima. A ruhsa that bow down and spare your life. Bow down, prostrate to that statue, and spare your life. Your second option is al azima, in where you're taking that brave honor and you're going to be saying no, even if there, even if it meant, even if the price was my life, even if it costed me my life, I'm not gonna die um, prostrating to that, um, to that statue. For example, I'm just, you know, hypothetically speaking. All right. So in that situation, you will die as a shaheed. Now, which is better? That's a different. Which is better? Um, that's a different discussion. Um, is it ruhsa and azima? Really, scholars had lots of differences of opinions on that and it was the scholars of usul al-fiqh the scholars of usul al-fiqh and usul al-fiqh is really the principles of fiqh they had differences of opinions um there were differences of opinions between the scholars of usul al-fiqh because because of one hadith the main difference is really because of hadith the, the prophet sallam actually says in allah yuhibbu an tu'ta rukhsa kama yuhibbu an tu'ta azamu that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves that people would would um, take the rukhsa, take that permission. Bravery and honorable bravery in practice. So here, so he said, you know, that would be something against our own will. In other words, he's basically showing them and expressing that that's an impossible thing that he would do even if he were forced. So then he was saying, you know, even if you force me, in the end, if if we were to do such a thing, if, and when we say if, and this is like a law kind of, and where it's an impossible thing, but hypothetically speaking, this is what, you know, so the context would be, hypothetically speaking, if we are to follow, if we are to follow your faith, that is in your way of life, then... We we would be um, creating and inventing a blasphemy against the Lord Almighty. In other words, this is this is telling them this is an impossible thing. You, you, there's no way, there's no way that you can even force us to believe or even live the 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 deviation that you're living in. After the Lord Almighty had the word najana protected us or saved us from. Uh, from this type of deviation, this type of deviation. So, but here's another thing: is that different scholars actually had a different interpretation for for that one. So, بعد إذن جان الله منها that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had saved us. So they were saying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala saved us from your practice or your city. وما يكون أن لنا أن نعود فيها. All right. So here, does this refer to the milla? Does this refer to the religion, or does this refer to the qarya? Does this refer to the village, or does the, this refer to the religion? So what? How is that even different? So here it's saying, بعد إذن جن الله منها after the Lord Almighty had saved us from it. So does the pronoun it refer to the religion, or does it refer to the village? Why would anybody say the village? So the reason why some scholars in the majority actually said village is because they said, because the context is saying that they were threatening them to expel them out of the country. So they were threatening them to expel them out of the country. So they're saying the response from Prophet Shu'aib alayhi salam is saying, well, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had saved us from that country. In other words, the Lord Almighty had saved us from your village and your practice. And even though you had threatened to leave to uh, to expel us out, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had actually saved us from that village and all the destruction that it was going to be um, facing. So, so this is Surah Al-Araf. 
وما يكون لنا أن نعود فيها So then the context again would say وما يكون لنا أن نعود فيها that we would not go back to it So does the word فيها refer to the religion or does it refer to the village All right, let's do it again So if we said there's min, minha and there's fiha, all right? And both, of course, are what? Both, of course, have the pronoun. So we would not go back to it, all right? Which is what? Which is the village. We would not go back to it, illa ayyasha Allah, unless the Lord Almighty wills that we go back to it. So why didn't we say an na'uda fiha? Why didn't we say that it was referring to the religion, to their religion? Illa ayyasha Allah. Two reasons. Number one is that it is impossible that the Lord Almighty would actually have that will that anybody would practice kufr. So there's absolutely no way that the Lord Almighty was going to will that you would go back and worship other than the Lord Almighty or practice the injustice that the Lord Almighty is against. So that actually means that the interpretation to say milletikum is actually a wrong interpretation in that situation or at least of a, or at least maybe we could say a distant or a very unlikely interpretation. What is a more likely interpretation? Na'uda fiha, that we would not go back to your city or your village unless the Lord Almighty. More likely interpretation, let's say it that way, because the Lord Almighty, so they would be, they can be given the permission anyways they were being threatened to be expelled out of the country. In other words, the context is whether they're going to be in the country or whether they're going to be expelled out of the country. All right. So this is then referring based on by one context. So this is referring to here they said and here na'ud. We're going to expel you. Na'ud, come back to it. All right. So he fiha would. It's impossible that the Lord Almighty, it is impossible that the Lord Almighty would will that anybody would actually um, or accept that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would never accept that people would practice a faith other than the faith that Allah Almighty had accepted. وَسِعَ رَبُّنَا كُلَّ شَيْءٍ عِلْمًا And then it continues. وَسِعَ رَبُّنَا That the Lord Almighty encompasses all knowledge. What does that mean? That, you know, there are Almighty, he encompassed all the knowledge, whether the knowledge of the what's going to happen in the future, what's going to happen in the past, and you don't determine. Of course, this is basically saying, this is basically saying that they're telling them, you know, the Lord Almighty determines the past and the future, and it's not really those that expelled those people out of that city. We depend Allah on Allah Almighty. Oh Lord Almighty, the word iftah baynana, it doesn't mean open. But if this is more speaking about more of a, a trial, a judgment. So Ya Allah, it's kind of like saying, Oh Allah Almighty, Oh Allah Almighty, let there be a fair, a fair and um a, a fair judgment against those that had prosecuted them and those that had prosecuted them for their faith. So if So why didn't we say open between us and our people? Because the word bilhaq. So bilhaq is telling us the word fataha in this context does not mean open, but it actually means judge. So Ya Allah judge between us Injustice, injustice. Wa anta khairul fatihin, and you are khairul fatihin. You are the best of those that judge. You are the best judge that is, right? The best, uh, the best to judge. Khairul fatihin could also mean the the one to bring about the best openings. The one, the one to bring about.
expel them out of the city, then they do that threat again. وَقَالَ الْمَلَأُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا The people that disbelieved from المَلَا from all those different all those different um, chieftains, of course, from from القوم, from the main, from the nation. لَإِنِ اتَّبَعْتُمْ شُعَيْبَ What did they threaten them with? They said, if you follow شُعَيْب, then you're for sure going to be in major loss. Then again, we could see the same example. your loss and you are going to be you're going to be losing probably your job you're probably going to be losing your status or you're probably going to be losing your home your children might be taken away from you and that is of course the type of the type of prosecution that the that the people uh, of Shaib were practicing against those people that 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 believed and you could see in nakum idan lakhasirun is that they didn't just use that as a form So they're actually making them, making them suffer and struggle. Uh, and of course, here what they meant in nakum idan lahasirun, what they were meaning was really in this life. So in other words, you don't practice our type of um, e economical distribution. You don't practice our type of faith. You don't practice our way of life. Then we're gonna make you lose all the privileges that you will have. And that's why in nakum idan lahasirun, like it will make you lose all the privileges that you might right. It, is it it's so similar like today if you if you don't practice a certain way i mean take a take a look at you know the the different muslims all around the world in where you know they will you know by probably wearing a beard or probably wearing a hijab or probably praying or probably um being muslim that there's a high chance that those people might actually be losing their privileges privileges to probably living in a certain in a certain safety na safe neighborhood or probably getting a job or who knows what and this is this is not new it's the same type of same type of pattern in where other believers had had faced so don't necessarily think it's harder on you to practice your faith today than than those that had come before us gives us that support i guess so then and here's that word fa remember that fa so the word fa actually the letter fa actually has a number of different meanings the letter fa can mean the cause of something and can also mean in where it's a time lapse that was that was that it didn't have um it didn't have a um it didn't have a, a long space between it so it was it happened quickly all right so the word again it can be that because of all the, the that the prosecution that they were doing against the people of Shaib because of disbelieving God Almighty, that is what resulted in a major quake. Rajfa. Rajfa, the word Rajfa actually means to to um, move um, with high um, force. It's like a, an earthquake or something. Um, and the word fa, the letter fa that is right here, can also mean that right away. So they they said that they did that, and instantly the Lord Almighty, the Lord Almighty had taken them. And the word akhadatum was not necessarily the literally taken them, but in other words, he, um, of course, they they ended up um, facing the result of their their actions. in where rajfa that major quake um, ended up in their extinction. So when we say akhadatum, it is another word of saying extinction. So. Remains they they remained in their own homes. Jeth, I mean, the word Jeth, and we mentioned it before. In where, because it seems like a 
الله سبحانه وتعالى الذين كذبوا شعيبا كان لم يغنوا فيها so those that كذبوا شعيبا كذبوا would mean those that had كذبوا those that had um, uh, uh, accused prophet شعيب of being a liar accused him of being a liar or that had denied what Prophet Shuaib had, had um, told them. Ka'allam yagnaw fiha. The word yagnaw means two things. So when we're looking at ka'allam yagnaw fiha as if they had not lived in such a city. In other words, they became totally extinct and then extinct and their, their remains as if they did not ever live there. So it's not ka'allam yagnaw fiha as if they did not um, become rich, even though that can also be an interpretation. So they, in other words, the, that that unfair um, distribution was making, I guess, um, capitalists and some people were getting rich and other people were getting poor, that, you know, kind of like today. So ka'allam yagnaw fiha as if they didn't have the money. As if they didn't have that capital, as if they didn't, they weren't rich. Um, that the, the life that they were. You could see how similar it is, even with, with today, in where we're having that that unfair distribution. We're getting people, the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer. And with politics, they're always, you know, we're seeing the Democrats and et cetera, always telling us and giving us those hopes that, oh, we're, we're actually going to be the ones to save you. And it's basically, you know, we're going to end that rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, even though they're the ones that are actually also the richer, the rich getting richer. So even with those um, Democrats, they're they're also concerned about getting richer than poorer, <laughs> all right, or at least um, then caring about your fair distribution. Aladina kadhabu shaiban, and I'm not saying that the Republicans are not doing that. Thinking that yeah, Democrats are are going to be giving us a fair distribution or a fair fair life, and not realizing that not realizing that there are different things that come with it. Anyhow, that's not our topic for today. الَّذِينَ كَذَّبُوا شُعَيْبًا كَأَلَّمْ هُمُ الْخَاسِرِينَ Sorry. كَانُوا هُمُ الْخَاسِرِينَ So those that had, and again, this is the final report, after أَخَذَتْهُمُ الرَّجْفَ After they were destructed, they had become extinct with that major quake. The report is those that had denied شُعَيْب, Prophet شُعَيْب, They were actually they were actually threatening and taking away all the different privileges from those that had believed. They were taking them away. Lost all their privilege. What privilege that they did they at least at uh, at one point have? Well, they had the the privilege of being rich at one point, or at least staying in that. So then he left them. In other words, this is really important. So when there are certain people that are living distant away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to take a time to actually leave such groups because their deviation will rub on you without you realizing. Then Prophet Shu'aib alayhi salam distanced himself away from them. Fatawalla turned his back, left them, isolated them. وَقَالَ يَا قَوْمِ لَقَدْ أَبَلَغْتُكُمْ رِسَالَاتِ رَبِّي وَنَصَحْتُ لَكُمْ He said, then, O oh my people, talking about later, later this happening, or was this during that time? In other words, is this, is this, on Judgment Day? Or is this during our time? During his time, that is. Um, it can actually mean both. That during that time, he just said, you know, I'm just going to leave. That's it. I'd given you, I'd given you.
ونصحت لكم. I was really transparent, fair, sincere in the way that I had given you the message. فكيف آسى على قوم كافرين. So now, how am I going to be sad or even feel any type of any type of um, um, sorrow for people that reject the Lord Almighty? In other words, it was. I love this Quran because it actually gives you that purple. Um, so the report. So every single country that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet to. In their So maybe they will seek repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala maybe they will get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because normally as people whenever we get sick that's when we lose hope in all the different materialistic things and our hope stays in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what the raw with an illness in the body probably your home breaking on you or I don't know burning down etc that's out Alright, so in other words, these people not only were they tried and they were given the chance to review themselves with an illness and uh, or even hardships in their life in order to help them find the the path and this is really important so um, many times you can think of an illness as just an illness as an evil thing but sometimes it's actually this evil thing that's directing you to many different people in that that we know their stories in where probably got in a car accident probably got um, a cancer or some kind of disease and that made them return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that reminded them of the Lord Almighty that got them on the right path and that's one one side in one way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bring you back all right and same thing when we're talking about probably poverty probably divorce or different darat that can happen to you all right and and these people at least the the people that rejected Allah, not this worked with them and not this worked with them they still distant themselves from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala well let's see You know, our forefathers, they also had those evil things happen to them and also the good things happen. And in the end, they didn't realize that whether that 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 whether the good or whether evil things happening to them, they all. Think what we're doing in life. In other words, then they would be taken. And here, taken to mean death comes to them. بغتة, suddenly. And they don't, they, they don't even realize. Diseases and the hardships and even all those evil things going away and replacing it with good things didn't realize not with the evil things and not with the good things that the in them they are totally distant from the Lord all hardship and not a good thing is going to take them back to the Lord Almighty they're just going to face their consequence and then
So we'll continue next week, you guys, and Jazakumullah Khairan for, for attending. You can actually unmute yourselves if you're interested. Um, and you want to participate, correct me in something. Um, I have a question, anything, go ahead. No one has any questions. Oh, there's somebody. Go ahead. Uh, I think it's Sister Isa too. Go ahead. Sister Isa too, you can unmute yourself if you want. If you want to say something um, by word. I could see your hand up. Go oh, ahead. Okay, so Surat al-A'raf. So the best way to Surat al-A'raf. Al-Juz al-Tasa. The ninth Juz. Got it? Okay, okay, yes. yes. Alright, well, Assalamu alaikum everyone. We'll see you all. Oh, somebody actually wrote something in the chat. We'll see. Oh, it was me. <laughs> All right. Assalamu alaikum, everyone.